The Irish people have never been united under their rule because of the British. To understand better how Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland were divided, we have to go back into the past for almost five centuries. In 1536, Henry VIII of England conquered Ireland and transformed it into a kingdom which was under the command of, you guessed it, Henry himself. But although they had control over all the island, they had one big issue, and that is religion. You see, Britain was mainly Protestant, while the Irish were Catholic, and that caused deadly conflicts between the two sides. Scottish, English, and Welsh Protestants were sent into the counties of Ireland to try and raise the popularity of the region, but they didn't succeed except in some parts of the province of Ulster. Fast forward to the year of 1798, when the people of Ireland started a rebellion against the British, who at this point controlled most of the Parliament of Ireland. Being Catholic, they wanted independence from the Protestant Anglo-Irish men who ruled the country. In response to the rebellion, in 1800, the Kingdom of Ireland stopped existing, becoming part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. No sovereignty, no freedom. This was not what the Irish fought for, and they considered it a failure, as English families owned most of the lands. Again, fast forward to 1910, when the Nationalists, who are Catholic Irishmen who wanted the independent Republic of Ireland, introduced the Home Rule, which was a movement that campaigned for Ireland's self-governance within the United Kingdom. However, the northern part of Ulster was mainly populated by Unionists, who were Anglo-Irish people who were Protestant and wanted to be a part of the United Kingdom. Eventually, the island was split between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, which later became the Republic of Ireland, an independent country. The separation between the Unionists and the Nationalists gave hope that the conflicts would end once and for all. Except they didn't. The problem was that only half of Northern Ireland's population was Unionists, and the other half Nationalists. By the end of the 1960s, things started to get violent between the Catholic minority and the Protestant regime. Extremist groups such as the Irish Republican Army said that Northern Ireland was part of Ireland too and started blowing up towns near the border, while the Unionist forces maintained that it was a part of the United Kingdom. Conflicts lasted for about 30 years and over 3,500 people were killed. In 1998, an agreement between the two sides called the Good Friday Agreement was signed which stated that Northern Ireland would remain in the UK and people would have the right to get both Irish and British citizenship. The hard border would be removed, people could travel freely between the two countries and if Northern Ireland wanted in the future to join Ireland, they could do so through a referendum. So, the Good Friday Agreement made peace between the Unionists and the Nationalists, who had fought for centuries. In 2016, the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. Officially, it has entered a transition period on the 31st of January 2020, but technically they are still in the European Union for now. You see, the UK left the EU because they wanted more control over their frontiers and to follow an independent trade policy. This begs the question, what do we do at the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland? A hard boundary would not work, as the Good Friday Agreement says that people can travel freely between the two countries, and it will also divide the nationalists. And according to the Withdrawal Agreement, this is not an option. Officially, we don't exactly know what will happen there. Another option could be that goods from Britain to Northern Ireland would have to go through customs, but that would put a border here as well, which will rip apart Northern Ireland from the UK. Another alternative would be for the UK to stay in the customs union, but that was not what people voted for when they chose Brexit, so this is not a possibility. So that leaves us with an option that respects both the Good Friday Agreement and Brexit, and that is the unification of the two Irelands. After all, the majority of people in Northern Ireland wish to remain within the European Union, and if the UK takes them out of the Union and takes away their European citizenship, one way of restoring that would be to become part of Ireland and therefore be part of Europe again. A poll from 2019 said that 51% of people living in Northern Ireland would vote for unification, 98% of them being nationalists. So the unification is something that many Irish individuals would say is inevitable. With that being said, what would a united Ireland look like? Politically and economically, the border between the two islands is here, but culturally it should be around here, dividing the nationalists and the unionists. From a financial point of view, Ireland has a GDP of about $400 billion and a GDP per capita of $80,000. On the other end of the spectrum, the North has a GDP 10 times smaller and a GDP per capita of $30,000. The big economic difference between the two is caused by, well, religion, because that's also what caused the conflicts from the 1960s to the 1990s in the first place. The violence scared away potential investors. Workers were getting hired based on their beliefs rather than their ability. 
and the disunity of the nation overall placed Northern Ireland behind. Many people think of this unification as when East Germany joined West Germany, and now, over 30 years later, the Eastern part is still behind the Western one. Considering that people from East Germany had an average yearly wage only 1.6 times smaller than the West. With this being said, if the unification will ever happen, the big economic gap between the two islands will be a massive problem. But this difference is nowhere near the biggest issue in terms of unification. In Northern Ireland, things will change drastically. The Unionists, who are about 900,000, will become a minority in the new country, which will be populated by 5.5 million nationalists. Catholicism will be the main religion, the new country will be a republic, the currency will be the euro instead of the British pound, the measurement system will change from imperial to metric, education qualifications are going to be different, and alignments as well. Northern Ireland will no longer be part of NATO, but instead will be a part of the European Union. The Republic of Ireland will see little change, where the northern part would be completely different. Many Unionists do not want this to happen. Some of them even prefer a hard border over this. This unification might lead once more to violent conflicts. And the UK doesn't like it either, because if Northern Ireland leaves the kingdom, Scotland might try to get independence as well. After all, they also didn't want to leave the European Union. And before Brexit even happened, 45% of the Scottish people already wanted Scotland as an independent country. Brexit was something to make the UK have control over its borders. But could it make the United Kingdom, one of the greatest powers in the world, slowly fall apart and in the end collapse?